Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're gonna talk about some spring flowering shrubs. Of course, here in the middle of April, there are lots and lots of shrubs that like to, uh, to show off in the landscape. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, zone 7B. And today, the Korean lilac, uh, this is Miss Kim lilac, uh, is uh, really showing off and uh, right here on April 15th. And it's just stunningly beautiful. This one's in the kind of the perfect location. It's getting about a half a day's direct sun, half a day shade. It's in an open enough space. I think that it's getting a, enough cold on it during the winter time that sets lots and lots of flower buds. I had one at the old house as well. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I sold lots of these when I had my nursery because it's just, I mean, it's, it, here in the South, we don't have the option to grow a lot of lilacs. There are a couple other varieties that do, um, that do, pr that do well enough here, but Miss Kim is probably the most popular. You can see I'm six feet tall and it's just a hair over six feet tall. It will definitely get taller than this. You can do some pruning on it um, after it flowers. I'm actually in the process of limbing this one up. I'm gonna turn it into a, just a small ornamental tree and it gives me on this very small lot the opportunity to actually plant some shade things uh, up underneath it. But you couldn't believe the uh, fragrance of this plant this morning. It's not quite full bloom, but it's almost. Nothing says spring in the south more uh, then azaleas. These are um, a, a few encore azaleas here, the ones that uh, repeat flower. This is autumn bonfire in the container, autumn fire down on the ground, and autumn lily next to me, which is a white uh, that is not, not open to any flowers yet. I've got several others in the landscape. I showed them in a video um, uh, earlier in the week uh, that I have, I think I have eight different encore azalea varieties, but it doesn't really, I mean, encore or not, or old fashioned, uh, azaleas. It's been a fantastic spring for them. We had a freeze in mid-March and I didn't know, um, you know, the 20, we had a 23 degree night, 23 won't damage the buds on azaleas, but it had a, we had about a 30 mile an hour wind and a lot of things got damaged, but the azalea buds, I think were still so tight that they didn't take any damage. And it's just been an outstanding azalea year. If you guys watch the masters uh, at Augusta, um, you know, last weekend, it was just absolutely amazing uh, how beautiful the azaleas are this spring. Most of the azaleas that people think about are the evergreen azaleas, like the encore azaleas I just showed you. And of course, you know, all of the old azaleas that are planted uh, everywhere, but we do have uh, deciduous azaleas, azaleas that lose their leaves in the winter, but then they come out with these incredibly bright colors, red and uh, oranges and yellows that you don't see uh, in, mo in the evergreen azaleas. They're also fragrant. Um, most are native, but not all, or there's some combination of native with non-native um, varieties uh, mixed in. But if you don't have a deciduous azalea, uh, just you know, find, find a space for one uh, the, um, and make sure it's a fragrant, you know, a fragrant variety. This is a solar glow. And I had one at the old house called Solar Flare. Whether you're buying repeat flowering azaleas like the Encores or, um, or, or non-repeat flowering azaleas, uh, the beauty of them is that they come in all different sizes. You can get gumpo azaleas that are, you know, you can keep less than two feet in height, that little, little low domes. And then there are dwarf, you know, semi-dwarf varieties that get three to four feet um, or maintainable at three to four feet. And then we have southern indica varieties that can get 10 and 12 feet tall and 10 and 12 feet wide if you let them. So all different sizes and shapes. Flower timing is also a thing. Uh, there are early, mid, and late flowering uh, evergreen azaleas. And so uh, I tend to pick ones that are mid to late um, and it at least slightly lessens the um, amount of frost damage I'm gonna get on. So I've covered a heat tolerant lilac and azaleas. Make a comment down below with your favorite spring flowering shrub. Um, I, I'd like to hear from you. Wygela, definitely on the list of one of my uh, favorites. We're in zone 7B here in Raleigh and uh, they're, not, um, they're not hardy that much further south than us, but for, for, for my area and everyone to the north, uh, Wygela make fantastic spring and up until early summer, probably in northern areas, flowering shrubs. Uh, this one's called Shining Sensation, uh, purple foliage, incredible pink flowers on it, uh, very long bloomed, and this one tends to have some remontant blooms on it, meaning well into summer uh, last year. It had some great color on it. I expect in its second year in the ground here, it's gonna do even more of that. I've got a gold foliage uh, variety behind it that I just transplanted to it. I think the gold and the uh, purplish black foliage look great together. This one has a slightly lighter pink flower. 
Uh, these, again, um, you can hold them, uh, a lot of the varieties in this three, kind of three to four foot height range, uh, but most of them probably want to get quite a bit uh, bigger than that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold these, you know, kind of in a tighter form, uh, but this is a plant that lends itself to just being planted out in a space where you can allow it to get big and take its natural form. Again, I'm not doing that, uh, but um, if you do have a large space to cover, uh, a wajila might be the uh, perfect plant for that. Good girl, Holly. All right, so if I was going to uh, rank my favorite, uh, it's definitely going to be uh, viburnums uh, as a group. And I have lots of uh, viburnums in this landscape, and uh, there's, just, there's just tons and tons of them. Uh, this is a Chinese uh, snowball viburnum, and it gets quite large. Uh, uh, there's an eastern snowball viburnum as well that uh, tends to grow as more of a, a tame shrub, but the inflorescences, the uh, group of flowers, uh, are, are definitely smaller on those. This is what people, when they're talking about a snowball viburnum, this is the one they're actually uh, talking about. So the Chinese snowball that I started with back there actually becomes a tree. Uh, you can see those uh, blooming this time of year, 15 and 20 feet high uh, if you let them get that big. That's what I plan on allowing that one to do, and I'm going to limb it up into a small tree. Uh, this is Shasta viburnum, which tends to have its flowers out over a kind of a flat uh, stem uh, that comes out, you know, almost at a, you know, a perfect 90 degree angle from the plant and the flowers rest right on top of it. There's lots of variations of this. Um, there's one called popcorn uh, that has the tighter round balls that, you know, do the same thing up the stems. But you can see the growth habit being d very different here on Shasta viburnum. It's kind of flat and wide. This plant will get as big as you want to let it get, uh, honestly. Uh, and then there's very small growing uh, viburnum like David I. I have a viburnum playlist on the channel that's uh, quite extensive. There are so many great viburnum. This is viburnum David I, beautiful foliage. Um, I think there are, there are over 150 species of viburnum and then there are interspecies hybrids uh, and what you get, what, what we have for landscape plants are things like Shindo viburnum that get big and tall very fast that are great screening plants down to something like David Eye that has this beautiful foliage and makes a great foundation plant. Uh, it's about to start flowering now. Uh, it's budded up to, uh, to flower. Uh, and then the deciduous viburnums like the Shasta viburnum that I showed you in the uh, front garden space. It's just an amazing a collection of plants. I have one, two, three, four, five, maybe six uh, varieties of viburnum in this landscape uh, at this point, and we'll probably add more in the future. The other thing about all those types of viburnums, uh, lots of them are native. This is viburnum nudum, which is a native, uh, a native species, and you can see it has this a great upright habit. Flowers are great for pollinators. The, the berries or the fruit that follows are great for birds uh, later in the season. Just a beautiful plant. I've come over to the Ralston Arboretum. Uh, this is um, another placatum like the Shasta viburnum uh, at my house. This one's called Mary Milton and you can see how big this one gets. I've missed the Korean spice viburnum, which are actually my favorite. They're the most, just have the most unbelievably, unbelievable fragrance. Uh, in the spring, but you can see, I can just go on and on and on with deciduous, evergreen, large growing, small growing, fragrant, non-fragrant, some kind of funky fragrant, um, uh, some screening plants uh, uh, in viburnum. And so that's why they're probably my favorite spring flowering shrubs. Last up on my list might be the least showy of my favorite spring flowering shrubs. This is uh, calicanthus. Uh, we have native calicanthus. The one I'm actually showing you here first is a cross between our native calicanthus and a, a Chinese species. Uh, this one's called a uh, Hartledge, uh, Hartledge wine. Uh, beautiful cultivar and big, probably the show, one of the showier ones with larger flowers. Great looking plant. It's maybe eight feet in height here at the Ralston Arboretum. This one's very, very lightly fragrant. Some are more fragrant. Um, some, for whatever reason, um, now in the trade, uh, are just not fragrant at all, and I don't, I don't know why. This, but, but this plant goes by a lot of names here in the South. Sweet Betsy, Sweet Booby, all kinds of names for this plant. I sold these like crazy at the uh, farmer's market in Raleigh because it's a, uh, it's one of those plants that has a lot of sentimental meaning to uh, older, uh, older folks in the South. 
Here's the native Florida calicanthus right here. And if you've ever, if you get a chance to smell this, it's amazing. It has this apple, applesauce fragrance to it. And I understand that way back when people would take these flowers and they would put them in their drawers to keep, you know, keep their clothes smelling fresh and things like, you know, they, they, would, they, would, they would have them in their pockets and actually use them, you know, as a type of perfume. Uh, this is more typical color on it, which is a, almost a reddish brown. And then there is a, um, a one, one called Athens that's kind of a, kind of a yellowish white um, that also has the same, same amazing fragrance again through propagation or whatever, there are ones out there in the world that I just can't get any fragrance from whatsoever, but this one has a great fragrance this morning. And again, the one called Athens that has a slightly uh, slightly different uh, color. But so there you go. Uh, there's five of my favorite spring flowering groups of plants, really. They're, really, I didn't narrow it down to a uh, single plant within one of those groups. But uh, again, tell me down below, what's your favorite spring flowering shrub? Uh, I'd like to hear from you. Thanks for watching.